This unit is on exponential and logarithmic functions. Again, review. If you'd like to go back to your pre-calculus book and read through, I think it might be lesson 22 or around in that thereabouts, 21, 22, and read about logarithms and natural logarithms. Because in this class, most of what we're going to be doing is with natural logarithms. So there's a couple graphs here that you should be able to do real fast and do it from memory without having to plot points. But I'm going to plot some points on the first one just so we can see where the graph comes from. We know that E is approximately 2.718. And that's the natural logarithm. So we're going to be doing stuff like Y equals E to the X. So let's go ahead and graph this. And just think in your mind if E is around 2 and 3 quarters or 2.7. So if x is 0, right here, then anything to 0 power is 1, so then y would be 1. So that would be 1 point. If x is 1, then you'd have e to the 1, or 2.7 to the 1 power would be 2.7. So if x is 1, then you're going to go up here to almost the 3, and there would be another point. If x was a negative 1, then you'd have e to the minus 1 or 1 over e, or you'd have y equals 1 over 2.718. And that would be over here, which would be about 0.3 something or other, between 0.3 and 0.4. So here we're going to have something around like this. So it turns out that our graph is going to be right like this and then going up like that. Okay. So that should be something that when you see y equals e to the x, you could graph that, okay? Now, this next part, a little bit tricky, and we're building on some things that we've learned in lesson four about finding inverses. So I'm going to start off with this. I'm going to say y equals the log base a of x. Now, we know that that is identical to a to the y equals x. But the inverse would be, remember how you find the inverse, you switch or reverse the variables. So in this case, we would have the inverse of this would not, I mean, this is the same, but the inverse would be a to the x equals y because we inverse or invert the variables, okay? And the same thing when we have y equals the natural logarithm of x. And we know that the natural logarithm is the same as log to the e, base e. So I'm going to go put the e in here because then this would be the same as e to the y equals e to the y equals x. But the inverse would be switch these or reverse these e to the x equals y, or y equals e to the x, okay? Now, in this unit, we're going to be solving for unknowns. We're going to be solving for x, etc., and there are certain rules. Now, I'm going to just encourage you, even though I'm trying to explain where these things come from, and you know me by now, this is what I try to do, there are some times when you just have to work it through, understand where it comes from, and then just commit it to memory. For example, when you say 12 times 12, you know it's 144. You don't sit there and go, oh, that's 12 counted four times. That's a rectangle over 12 and up 12. You don't have to redo that every time in your head. You just know 12 times 12 is 144. So we're going to have seven, what I'm going to call uh, logarithm rules here. And I'm going to list them and go through them. And we're going to use the natural logarithm of 1 equals 0. This is our first one. Now, let's think it through. E here, e to the 0 equals 1. That makes sense, okay? But still, when you see this, you don't have to think this through every time. Just natural logarithm of 1 is 0. If we have the natural logarithm of e equals, well, that's e to the something equals e. Oh, it must be a 1 because e to the 1 power equals e. That makes sense. Then we have this one, and you're going to use this one a lot. I'm going to use parentheses here. Okay, now, 
these things, because they're inverses, they're like multiplicative inverses or additive inverses, they cancel each other out. You can think of that way. Whenever you see this next to this, you can just, you're left with this. But think of it this way. If there's a little e in here, e to the x equals e to the x. So it makes sense. But when you first see this, you're thinking, man, that's pretty slick. How can you do that? But if you want to get the x by itself, you're going to need this because this is what this is helpful because we're going to be able to free up exponents to solve for x. So if we have e to the x equals something, you pull this out of your bag of tricks and you've now got the x freed up and now you can solve x equals pi or something like that. Next one's a little harder, at least it is for me to grasp. E to the natural logarithm of x equals x. This is the reverse of this. They're inverses of inverses. Wow, there are a bunch of inverses going here. But these also cancel each other out and produce this. So if you're given, for example, the natural logarithm of x equals something, you want to free up the x to solve it for an unknown, you have to take both sides to the e to the power of this, and then you free up the x. Now, the way I get my little brain around it is I'm thinking, well, I've got, let's take this off by itself. Logarithm, natural logarithm e of x equals, I'm going to call it q. e to the q equals x, all right? But this whole thing is equal to q. This whole thing, when you put it onto the q, the q onto the e makes this an x. So if I could replace this whole 